Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today, we are going to be adding in the specs library, which will give us an entity component system. If you would like to know more about entity component systems, I can recommend the book Game Programming Patterns by Robert Nystrom. It's an excellent read that sums up the problem that entity component systems solve very neatly. It also contains excellent information about other game programming patterns as well. The first thing we need to do is add the specs library as a dependency. Links are available to the specs documentation in the notes under this video. We are using version 0.16.1 of the specs library and also the specs derive crate, which is at version 0.4.1. Newer versions may be available to you, so check the documentation if you'd like to use a more up-to-date version. We then need to create our component types. The components are the structs which describe our entities and we'll try and make them extendable to make our lives easier when we start to add different component types later on. First, we add in a new file called components.rs. The first thing we do in the file is import the specs prelude and specs derive component pieces. Everything that is renderable will have a position. We'll use the derive component declaration so that it prepares our struct for use with the library. Other than that, a position has an X and Y coordinate as well as a rotation associated with it. We also need to have a renderable component. This describes where the image file is located as well as other information like the input width and height and output width and height. We used constants to represent these before. The struct itself is designed to be reusable in other projects, so it has enough details to describe how to deconstruct a sprite sheet and offset the image rotation if necessary. However, we won't be using those bits today. And finally, we create an empty struct to represent the player. At the moment, the player will have no attributes that we want to store, so we'll just use it to differentiate this from other components by creating the type. This will hopefully make more sense later on, particularly when we start adding other entities that are not the player in a future video. Then we will switch to the main file and we'll need to import the world, world X and join libraries from the specs library namespace. We also need to import our components module using pub mod components. Just above the main function declaration, our entry point for the application, we will need to create a new type called state and give it an attribute called ECS of type world imported from specs. This will hold our entity component system or ECS for short. Having created the type, we'll now create an instance of that type called GS short for game state and it needs to be mutable because it will be constantly changing and we will need to call the world new constructor to instantiate the ECS. After this, we need to register our component types with the ECS system. We do that by calling ECS.register and pass in the types from the components module. Our three types need to be registered. We then need to create a new file called game. Inside this file, we will create two functions, update, which will do our game updates, and one called load world, which will allow us to set our initial state. For now, just placing the spaceship. Into this function, we will need to pass the entity component system. It needs to be mutable, and it is of type world. Once we have this, we can create an entity calling the create entity function. This has to have each of the component types with the values we require. The position will be 350 and 250, rotation starting at zero. We also need to create a renderable component. The texture name is the file name wrapped in a string from. The input width is still just 100 and the same for the height. The output width and height for now will be the same as the input width, a value of 100. Our frame is zero because we only have one and it's zero indexed. And our total frames is one because there is only one. The offset rotation is of course zero. And finally, we add in the empty player component type, which has no values. Then we call the build function to finalize the creation of the entity. We need to remember to import the specs types at the top of the file. The types are world, world X, and builder. Now that we've created the game module, we need to import it using pub mod game. Immediately after the registration section, we will call the game load world function and pass in a mutable reference to the ECS. 
Now we'll go back to our game module and modify the update function so that we can control our player image. We want to pass in, obviously, our entity component system, and that needs to be a mutable reference because we will be updating the components. And we also need to pass in the key manager so that we can respond to key presses. The type, of course, is a hash map with a string and bool types. The way we use our entity component system is to gather the similar types together in a join, and then we can iterate over them to make sure we operate on all of them. You can call different types of storage depending on if you want to be able to write back to a component or whether you just need to read it. First, we grab all of the positions in the ECS by calling ECS.WriteStorage and pass in our component type of position, not forgetting the crate part. Then we can grab the players, and this doesn't need to be mutable because we aren't going to update the values on these components. We can query the ECS using the read storage for this. Now we bring this all together by iterating over the components we have selected using the join function. So we only get the components from the entities that have both attributes. This is done using for and ignore the player object, but we do want the positions. Then these are in the groups we've created as a tuple with join on the end. So this will give us only the components of our system that exist in the given entity, where both components exist for the entity. Next up, we want to check if a key is pressed by calling create utils is key pressed, passing in the key manager and querying for the letter D. Then we want to rotate our position by 1.5. At this point, we should create a constant to hold our rotation speed so that we don't have magic numbers in our code. And then we might as well just copy and paste and update to check for the letter A and subtract the rotation speed instead. And we'll add in some boundary checks so that our rotation is never outside of the 0 to 360 degree range. If the rotation is greater than 360, then we subtract 360. And if it's less than 0, we add 360. Now we just need to update our render function so it'll read from our entity component system. We will return to main.rs and scroll to our render function at the top. We'll scroll to the end of the function signature and swap out the key manager for the ECS of type world. And it can be immutable, as we don't need to update it here. Next, we get rid of all of the drawing code we had before. Similar to how we handled things in the update function, we need to create our read storage blocks and then iterate over them but this time we only care about position and the renderable component types. Again, we create our iterator for loop and extract each renderable and position, joining them at the end. We can now create our source rect, similar to the one that we had before, but this time we reference the renderable input width and input height. Then we get the x coordinate from the position and cast it as an i32 and the Y coordinate also cast as an I32. Then the destination rect, which we create from the X position minus the renderable output width over two, and the same thing for the Y coordinate to make sure it's centered. The width and height are just the output width and height of the renderable. Next, we find the center of the image, and this is a point which we can do from the output width over two and the output height over two. Finally, the texture is generated by calling the texture manager with the name of the renderable stored inside the component. And we can now call our copy x function, passing in the variables we've created above. The texture, the source, the destination, the angle of rotation, the center point, and also not setting flip horizontal or flip vertical. We ignore the return value and we should be ready to go. So we try building using cargo run. And we can see I forgot to remove the argument to pass the ECS instead of the key manager to the render function. We also forgot to import the join functionality into the game file. We cargo run again and we see we're still missing some references. The hash map import is missing from the game file. And we rebuild and this time it runs. Holding the A and D keys doesn't update our rotation, and this is because we aren't calling our update function. Immediately before our render function, we insert game update, passing in a mutable reference to the ECS system and a mutable reference to the key manager. Now, when we run it, we have our spaceship and it responds to the key presses of A and D.
and rotates around the center point of the image. And so there we have it. We can now interact with the player item and we've added in an entity component system. This will make adding new entities very easy as we move forward. Our game is starting to come together nicely. Join us next time when we will be moving the player character around and making sure to screen wrap so that it will drop off one side and onto the other. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I hope you can join us for the next video. Take care of yourselves and see you there. Bye for now.